She was at the forefront of the Black Panther Party in the 1960s and 70s, but Oakland's Elaine Brown was not only a member of the revolutionary organization, she was also once its leader. Yeah, as we celebrate Black History Month, KTV's Rob Ross sat down with Brown to discuss her life in the Black Panthers and her life as an activist since then. Musician, author, and most famously a former leader of the Black Panthers in Oakland, Elaine Brown is still politically active, still a force of nature, even at 78 years old. As long as I can walk and talk, then I'm going to be putting in my two cents and trying to make do something, even if I am an army of one. On the walls of her Oakland apartment... I love Huey. Uh, even though he could make me mad. There are portraits of her friends and former revolutionaries, such as Huey Newton, the co-founder of the 1960s and 70s black militant organization, the Black Panthers. I met Huey, and uh, as to put, it, to put it just quickly, he became uh, my uh, lover and my leader. Brown was raised in Philadelphia but moved to Los Angeles in the 1960s where she saw the poverty in Watts and the well-documented abuse of black people by Los Angeles law enforcement. She says she was moved by a group of children in a housing project where she was giving piano lessons in 1967. Here they are and I'm doing nothing for them. They're living like in Watts. What am I doing? So I became immersed in the black organizations around me. I walked into the Black Panther office and said, you know, I, I surrender my life to the revolution. And I meant that then, and I mean it now. By 1971, at Newton's urging, Brown moved to Oakland largely to edit the Black Panther newspaper. With their black berets and leather jackets, the Panthers set up armed citizen patrols for what they said was for self-defense. Brown, like all members, was trained in using a gun. The Panthers wanted change, radical change, centered around black empowerment challenging the very foundation of the oppression of black people, going back to the 400 years or so of slavery. It was the most glorious time I could imagine, much less of my life. The Panthers established free lunch programs for children in low-income neighborhoods and free health clinics. But there would also be shootouts with police, which led to the deaths of an Oakland police officer and to Black Panthers. FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover once called the Panthers, quote, the greatest threat to internal security of the country. We were not going to be crying and protesting talking about Black Lives Matter. We're saying we're armed, too. By 1974, Newton had fled to Cuba to avoid criminal charges and chose Brown to run the operation, almost unheard of for a woman in those days. In the beginning, uh, I was a little heady with power, um, but I learned that, you know, the other side of that is that you are responsible. So decisions that I would make would affect people, and it was a life and death operation. The Panthers would later dissolve, but Brown remained active, fighting for prison reform and better education for low-income children. Her nonprofit, Oakland and the World Enterprises, is currently about to break ground on a 79-unit affordable housing project on this lot in West Oakland. Brown says she has no plans to slow down. How would you like to be remembered? Um, that, you know, I really meant everything I said, and I, and I was a revolutionary. That's all. In Oakland, Rob Roth, KTVU, Fox 2 News.